In the 1940s, two American vessels were navigating the Straits of Malacca when they picked up several distress messages from a ship somewhere in the area. They would immediately head towards the vessel to investigate what was going on. Locating the ship only led to more questions than answers. A mystery that has captivated people ever since. What happened to the Orang Medan? The story goes that sometime in the 1940s, two American vessels, the city of Baltimore and the Silver Star, were navigating the Straits of Malacca when they would suddenly pick up several strange messages from a ship in the area. These messages supposedly came from the Dutch merchant ship SS Orang Medan. After the first message, there was a frenzy of more messages in Morse code. Then the Orang Medan sent this message. We float. All officers including the captain dead in chart room and on the bridge. Probably the whole crew dead. A few more messages came through, but they were mostly gibberish. As the crews of the city of Baltimore and the Silver Star tried to figure out what this message was and where the ship was located, two more words came through clear as day. I die. After that final message, there was nothing but silence. Nothing more was heard from the Rang Medan after that message. After some searching, the crew of the Silver Star did locate the stricken ship, floating aimlessly in the Pacific Ocean. After getting close, they quickly boarded the Rang Medan to investigate and search for any possible survivors. Hello. The ship itself seemed undamaged at first glance, but everyone on board was dead. The crew were strewn across the decks, the captain on the bridge, his officers in the wheelhouse, chart room and wardroom, all deceased, sprawled on their backs, staring sightlessly straight up with expressions that were frozen in fear. As unsettling as this sight was, the crew of the Silver Star kept moving through the ship, searching for anyone that might still be alive, but they would find nothing beyond more bodies. None of the dead had any visible signs of injuries, but they all had the same look of absolute terror on their faces. Realizing that there was nothing they could do at this point, the crew of the Silver Star decided to head back to their own ship. Their captain gave orders to tow the stricken vessel back to port. So they set about doing just that, and just as the crew got done securing the ship, they noticed smoke billowing from the vessel. A fire had seemingly broken out somewhere within the ship, which forced the Silver Star crew to cut the lines tying the two ships together. As they floated further from the Orang Medan, it suddenly exploded. As the crew of the Silver Star watched, the Orang Medan quickly sank to the bottom of the ocean, never to be seen again, and preventing anyone from investigating further. Around 10 days after the incident, a lifeboat washed up on Bokak Atoll in the Marshall Islands. There were seven passengers aboard, but only one was still alive. He was found by a missionary and once brought to safety, the man, whose name supposedly was Jerry Rabbit, would tell the missionary that he had been the second officer at a ship called the Orang Medan. According to Rabbit, he had been recruited in Shanghai to work on a former Chinese steamer. Supposedly, he felt that this was a stroke of luck, as the recruiter did not bother to check his qualification, experience or background. It was only when the ship had left port and was far out at sea 
that Rabbit started wondering what he had gotten himself into. After the ship, which was called the SS Orang Medan, left Shanghai, it took on around 15,000 crates of unknown cargo at various Chinese ports before setting off for Costa Rica. To Jerry Rabbit, the strange cargo, how easily he was recruited, and the fact that the ship seemed to be avoiding the authorities could only mean one thing. This was a smuggling operation, and he was right in the middle of it. He still didn't know what they were smuggling, but at some point many of the crew started complaining of stomach cramps and fatigue. Rabbit would inform the captain who dismissed it. The illness spreading through the crew would only get worse, and it wasn't long before it claimed its first victim. The cause of death was recorded as a heart attack. Rabbit knew that there was no way that the crew member had died of a heart attack. And this only made his suspicions grow. More people would get sick, and more people would die. It got to the point where Rabbit didn't really care what happened, he had to know what was going on. So he stole the ship's logbook, which listed items like sulfuric acid, cyanide, and nitroglycerin. To him, these seemed to be more likely causes of the illness and increasing death toll on board than a heart attack. It was all he needed to know. He refused to stay on the ship and wait for it to claim him as well. Taking the logbook with him as proof, Rabbit and six other men who also did not want to stay on the ship stole a lifeboat and fled. By the time this lifeboat washed ashore on the Marshall Islands, Jerry Rabbit was the only one still alive. But death would come to claim him too. Jerry Rabbit died only a few days after landing on shore and telling his tale. It's believed that he died of exhaustion, though some speculate that the illness that took the lives on the Orang Medan was the cause of his death as well. The missionary who had listened to Jerry Rabbit's strange tale would then go on to tell the story to others. Reportedly, he told the story to an author named Silvio Shirley, who then told the story to a newspaper. What makes the tale of the Orang Medan so interesting, to me at least, is that it isn't over the top supernatural, beyond the fact that everyone on board apparently had a terrified expression on their face, and the fact that the ship seemed to conveniently explode right as the crew of the Silver Star was about to tow it. Beyond that, it's not an unbelievable story. A ship that was smuggling some kind of cargo and running into trouble on the open sea isn't hard to believe. In fact, it's the opposite. It's very easy to believe. Because it happens all the time. Just recently, in 2023, an old, rusty and overloaded fishing trawler that was smuggling migrants would run into trouble and sink in the deepest part of the Mediterranean Sea. Once the search and rescue operation was called off, over 500 people were presumed dead. People at the mercy of ruthless smugglers. Not exactly something that's unheard of. Which does lead to many people believing that the story of the Rang Medan has a lot of truth to it. But it does lead to the question asked in the beginning of the video. What happened to the ship? There are some theories about what could have happened to the Orang Medan and her crew. Here's four of them. The first theory regarding the Orang Medan ties into the story that was told by Jerry Rabbit. The freighter was used for smuggling, and on the final voyage it was smuggling chemical substances, such as cyanide, sulfuric acid, or nitroglycerin. Or perhaps it was smuggling all three of those. The theory goes that the ship was smuggling one or all of these dangerous substances. 
the ship was not in the best condition. As it was used for smuggling, the crew didn't really care much about maintenance. So during the ship's final voyage, seawater had found its way into the ship's hold. This caused toxic gases to be released and then spread throughout the ship. This led to the crew falling ill and then dying. If the ship was also carrying nitroglycerin, then that too could have reacted with the seawater, causing both the fire and the explosion. Another theory that also point to the cargo being the cause for the demise of the crew say that the ship was transporting some kind of nerve gas that had been stored in China by the Japanese during the Second World War. At the end of the war, this nerve gas was going to be handed over to the US military. But the military did not want to transport this cargo themselves due to the paper trail that it would leave behind. So they elected to have a non-registered ship transport the cargo either to the US or to an island in the Pacific, such as Costa Rica. The third theory states that it was the fire itself that caused the demise of the crew. The theory goes that there may have been a small fire or a malfunction in the ship's boiler system, which went undetected by the crew until it was already too late. And this led to carbon monoxide spreading throughout the ship and causing the deaths of all aboard the ship. With no one around to try and stop it, the fire would then spread out of control, leading to the explosion that sunk the ship. I did say before that the story isn't over the top supernatural, but that does not mean that there are not theories that venture into the supernatural. Yorang Medan is considered a legend about a ghost ship, after all, and a ghost story would not be complete without a mention of the paranormal. In this case, it's the bodies themselves that is the main cause for this particular theory. How all of them were lying on their backs, their faces staring up at the sky with expressions frozen in terror. The theory goes that something was stalking the ship, scaring the crew to death. As believable as some elements of the story is, there's also a lot of questions and a lot of counterpoints to any theory. For instance, if you believe the story, a lot of people have been asking why did they wait until the last minute to send a distress signal? And if it was carbon monoxide, wouldn't the crew of the Silver Star notice it when they got on board? Same goes for the suspicious cargo. Wouldn't they have noticed something when they got on board? Another big question regarding this case is the date when this happened. I mentioned that it was said to have happened sometime in the 1940s, but the precise year tends to vary from source to source. Sometimes it's 1940, other times it's 1947 or 1948, in either June or February. This is most likely due to various variations of the story being told across a period of time, and with each new retelling adding, removing, or embellishing details of the story, which makes it difficult to pinpoint the truth if there is one. The biggest mystery about this story is the ship itself, as it doesn't seem to have ever existed. Ever since this story was first published, many, many people have looked into it. Many of whom were authors who have noted that they could not find any proof of this ship's existence. The first place many went to look is Lloyd's shipping register, as it's one of the best, if not the best, sources of information on the world fleet, and is known for the classification and certification of ships. So if the Orang Medan existed, even under a different name, it should be listed there, but no one has been able to find it. There's also no registration records for a ship by the name of Orang Medan located in various countries, including the Netherlands, which is where the ship is said to be from. 
there is also no official report of this incident. However, the other two ships mentioned in the story, the Silver Star and the city of Baltimore, do seem to have existed. The Silver Star was owned by Grace Lines of New York. It was originally named Santa Cecilia before being renamed the Silver Star in 1946, but it would be renamed once again to Santa Juana in 1947. The city of Baltimore is harder to pinpoint though. There was a passenger ship called the SS City of Baltimore that was sold to the United States government in 1940. I also found references to other ships with this name, such as the SS City of Baltimore that was owned by Inman Line and operated for 30 years until 1885. And apparently there was a steamship called the SS City of Baltimore that was involved in a sighting of a sea serpent in the Gulf of Aden on January 28, 1879. It's possible that this ship was the same one owned by Inman Line, but it's unclear. This ship is obviously not the one referenced in the story of the Orang Medan, but I just thought it was interesting. Back to the Orang Medan. Why haven't anyone been able to find information on the Orang Medan, or whatever name it had originally? Well, some people have tried to offer counter-arguments to those questions. For instance, the ship's registry never being found is believed to be for one or two reasons. The first one being that the ship was registered in Sumatra, which the name apparently hints at. The word orang is Malay or Indonesian for man or person. Medan is a Sumatran island, which means that the name of the ship is roughly man, person from Medan, or man of Medan. The second counterpoint is the smuggling angle. If the ship was indeed used as a smuggling vessel, then it would make sense that it wasn't registered anywhere, at least not under its real name. The less that anyone knew about the ship and its cargo, the better. Author and historian Ray Bainton has researched the story of the SS Orang Medan for a long time. He's one of the people who came up with the smuggling theory, but he's also one of the people who met with dead end after dead end, trying to find any evidence of this ship's existence. He would check Lloyd's shipping registers, the Dictionary of Disasters at Sea, the Dutch shipping records in Amsterdam, and the Maritime Authority in Singapore, but found nothing. All of these dead ends led to Bainton reportedly thinking about dismissing the story as fictional when he was suddenly contacted by someone who claimed to have information about the case. A German professor named Theodor Sirfstoffer who reportedly has researched the Orang Medan for about 50 years. And he was the one who revealed, or named, the two American ships that heard the distress call coming from the SS Orang Medan, the city of Baltimore and the Silver Star. He would also point Bainton towards a German booklet from 1954 called Death Ship in the South by author Otto Mielke. This booklet is viewed by some as evidence to both its, the ship existing and the fate that it suffered, as this booklet contains details about the route, engine power, and even the name of the captain. According to this booklet, the disaster took place in 1947, and the ship had been transporting dangerous cargo, which, as the theory suggests, explains both the explosion and the death of the crew. So, case closed, right? Another big question is, where did this story come from? Sure, you had this booklet from 1954 that says that it happened in 1947. But as I said before, the date of this happening has been hard to pinpoint. The first appearance of this story in newspapers appears to be a series of three articles in a Dutch-Indonesian newspaper between February and March 1948. 
The area where this incident is said to have been located is about 400 nautical miles southeast of the Marshall Islands. These articles also describe the experiences of the sole survivor of the Orangmadang crew, who in the article is described as a German man who washed up on Tuwangi Atoll in the Marshall Islands, who then told his story to a missionary that the ship was carrying badly stowed cargo, that most of the crew had perished because of this cargo. And after the man died, the missionary would then tell the story to author Silvio Shirley of Trieste, Italy, who was the source of the story in the Dutch newspaper. The article concludes with a disclaimer that the newspaper do not have any other data on this mystery or any answers to the many questions regarding this mystery. But the author concludes by writing that Silvio Shirley has assured them of the authenticity of this story. The first English reference to the ship actually predates the Dutch newspaper by at least seven years. A webpage called the Skittish Library found articles from 1940 in both the Daily Mirror and the Yorkshire Evening Post that report on this incident. The story is largely the same, though there are some differences. For instance, the location is listed as the Solomon Islands. The ship is called a steamship and not a freighter. And the time the incident took place was reportedly November 1939. The SS messages were also different from later reports. For instance, the messages would say that the crew was dead, but the radio operator was asking for a doctor, which then changed to asking for a warship. What's most interesting is that the main source for the story still seems to be Silvio Shirley in Trieste, Italy. There was also another English article about the incident in the May 1952 issue of the Proceedings of the Merchant Marine Council, which was published by the United States Coast Guard. There's also a reference to the incident in the Albany Times of Albany, New York, from October 10, 1948, which referenced its original source as Elsevier's Weekly. As I said before, the idea that a ship that was smuggling dangerous cargo sunk due to disaster of some kind is very believable which is something that unfortunately happens all the time. The problem with the story of the Orang Medan, though, is the inconsistencies. The date of the disaster constantly changing, the no official documents of a ship called the SS Orang Medan existing, no report of the incident, the SOS messages being different from story to story, the location being different from story to story, the fact that the ship who found the SS Orang Medan is only named in one version of the story. Even the story of the supposed lone survivor changed. All of these inconsistencies do seem to point to this being a story. A creepy ghost tale about the dangers lurking out on the ocean. Some closer than you might think be it within the depths of the ocean or on board the very ship that traversed the waters. But if we entertain the idea that this story may have elements of truth, is it possible that it originated from something that did happen? A ship that once sailed the Indian Ocean. A ship that was carrying suspicious cargo and then tried to keep its existence hidden a ship that sunk after a disaster. It's possible, and until records of the Orang Medan is found, or the ship itself is found, we may never know. But it is very much possible that the story may have originated from something that did happen. Stories do have a habit of taking on a life of their own, especially when it keeps getting retold. But in any report of this tale, the source of the story may be Silvio Shirley, who either told the story of something that he had heard, or made the whole thing up. 
Regardless of what the truth may actually be, the story of the SS Orang Medan is a fascinating mystery in nautical history. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.